Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, as you can see, I am sporting the new stole that was given to me last week in honor of the installation. Thank you. Technically, it's supposed to be for special occasions only, but then I realized anytime we're here together doing this, it is a special occasion, so you'll see a lot of this. Last week, we started the series on relationships, and we talked about the challenge of change. Uh, I shouldn't say that. Last week, we talked about the challenge of change. I need to admit right now, I'm a little under the weather. <laughs> so if I am a little off, that's why. Last week, we started the sermon series on the challenge of change, and we talked about the challenge of personal change and how difficult that can be. Because on the one hand, we yearn to change. We want to grow and become something more. We can taste it. We can feel it. And on the other hand, we're afraid of change. Because if we change, it means we head into an unknown future, into a place of uncertainty. So we're forced with this choice. And the choice is this, that if we don't change, we may very well head the very direction we're going. On the other hand, if we do change, the change we yearn for, then suddenly the future is unknown. And so we talked last week about some of the ways that we can embrace change and grow into the people that God calls us to be. Now, if that weren't difficult enough, and it is, then we add the layer of relationships to this. Think about this. If we know that we're changing all the time because of life experiences, it also means the people we're in relationship with are also changing all the time. And think about how complicated this gets. It means in our relationships, I'm changing, and you're changing, which changes the nature of the relationship, which then, in effect, impacts us and the change that comes back to us. It's this constant dance and flux of change in relationships. And the question is, how do we address that? How do we keep up with one another with so much change going on within us? It's something we need to think about, because literally our well-being rests on our relationships and whether they're going well or not. I was in the subway a few weeks ago, and the door opened, and this couple entered. They looked like supermodels. And they walked in, and they're pushing a, a little stroller with a toddler, and then they began to talk with one another. Now, talk is polite. They were debating. They were disagreeing. They were fighting. It was uncomfortable for all of us in the car, because they were loud. You had to listen to them. It was like watching a train wreck happen right in front of you. And if that's all we knew about them in that moment, that vitriol and fighting, we'd know that no matter what else is going right in their life, they're not very happy right now. Because as our relationships go, 
so goes our personal well-being. So what we're going to do for just a few minutes this morning is look at relationships and the change and how they can be something that God uses to grow us and shape us in positive ways, not to tear us down. One of the first things to realize is that we often speak about relationships like they're a state or a status, like we're in a relationship or we're not in a relationship. But actually, it's more of a process. It's not a state. We're always relating to people. And how we relate to people changes as they change and we change. If it doesn't, it just won't work. Now, it's Father's Day. By the way, happy Father's Day to all of you who are fathers. Imagine, just imagine this for a moment, that a father walks in with their 35-year-old daughter, walks in by the hand, which we might think is very loving, sits down, service ends, takes the daughter by the hand over to brunch, sits her down, puts a bib on her, cuts up her food, <laughs> feeds her, tries to burp her, takes her hand, and walks out. Craziness, isn't it? because the father's trying to cheat the child like she used to be when she was first born. But the child has grown and changed, and therefore how we parent needs to change. The same is true in our relationship. Sometimes we come together and we treat one another exactly as we did when we first met. And we've changed. And how we are in relationship needs to change with it. I learned such a powerful lesson early in our marriage from my history professor at Western Theological Seminary, Dr. Brugink. While I was there, they had this opportunity to travel and go to Greece for three weeks. And it was a scholarship for both Tina and me, and it would cost us about $500 for three weeks to be in Greece and tour. Fantastic opportunity. Now, I had dreamed of traveling. I had never traveled outside the country yet, of living in other places. Tina, not so much. In fact, she told me, you probably should have informed me of this before we got married, not after. <laughs> and so I go home, I tell her the good news. Guess what? We have a scholarship. We're going to go to Greece for three weeks. Now, she didn't really have a big interest in travel at that time, and she was deathly afraid of flying then. And so she said, you go. I'll stay home. And so I went back to Dr. Brugink and said, well, because of circumstances, it will just be me going on this trip. He looked at me and kind of perplexed, and then very serious. And then he said this, I think I need to make something very clear to you. He said, you're going to have lots of opportunities to do things and experience things, and it will change you. And you two are just married, and you need to learn to do things together so you grow together, not apart, and I want this to be one of them. So here's the deal. If she doesn't go, no scholarship for you. <laughs> if she goes, there's a scholarship for both of you. And so I went home and tried to be my charming self. <laughs> and we went on the trip. And it changed our lives, literally. All the things we've done and the places we've been were a direct result of that, that little catalytic event, something we shared together spawn this dream that things we could do together, all because he insisted that we share that experience together. It's important for us in our relationships to find way to share things, share experiences so that we grow together and not apart. But it's not enough just to be able to share experiences. There's much more to it. In some ways, we need to learn a disposition towards relationships, some kind of model of relationships that help guide us of how relationships should be. I want to read this text again to you because I really think in some ways it provides the model, the disposition, the thing we need to go to to learn how to be in relationship with one another and deal with the constant change in those relationships. Listen to these words again. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. 
Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. And here's the line I love. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Those are remarkable words about relationship. And we need to hear words like that. We need a model like that. Otherwise, we just enter relationships, making it up as we go, or relying on that which was taught to us or modeled for us as we were growing up. Sometimes that was good, sometimes it wasn't. But we try to do our best. And sometimes we do crazy things in the name of love and relationships. Did you read about or see the news clip about the clarinet player this week? What a crazy story. He is a prodigy, pro, a prodigy, prodigy clarinet player. There's that illness getting there. Uh, but stick with me. Uh, playing the clarinet, at age seven he started. Remarkable. He, he dreamt of playing professionally, had an opportunity to try out for the Colburn Conservatory in LA, went to try out. It's the, the number one instructor in the world for clarinet. He gets an email that says he wasn't accepted. He's crushed. He goes on to school and pursues this in another way, and then decides he really wants to study with this instructor. So he goes back to audition again in another place with the same instructor. And when he gets there, the instructor said, what are you doing here? You rejected me. And the student said, I rejected you. I got a letter from you rejecting me. Come to find out that his girlfriend at the time had intercepted the email of acceptance and changed it to a decline. And therefore, he thought he didn't have that opportunity. All in the name of love. <laughs> all trying to preserve their relationship. We can all do that in some ways. These crazy little things in the name of love or in the name of furthering relationship that doesn't help it. It actually hinders it. Think about a couple of nuggets in this passage that we can rest on. One is that we seek to bless others. That whatever it is we're doing, we want to see them thrive and grow and flourish. That's the starting point. And furthermore, when they stumble and fall, when they make mistakes, when they don't do things that are good for us, what do we do? Notice those words. Hold tight onto what is good and dislike what is bad. Actually, it says hate what is evil, but we need to temper that a little bit. You could translate it, dislike what is bad or troublesome. And often we do the reverse. We cling to what is bad and we ignore what is good. But literally, when we're in relationships, when people seek to bless us and they cling to what is good in us, even when we can't see it, God literally uses that to save us so that we can see those things again and reclaim them and grow into the person God created us to be. There's kind of a math at work here in this passage, I think, and it's this. The good news is we have control of 50% of a relationship. It says, as far as it depends on us, we control how we respond to others. I can't control what you do, but I can control how I respond to it. So use that to be a blessing. Use that to love. Use that to rejoice with others. Use that to weep with others. We have that choice. But then we have 50% control, but it also causes us to give 100%, not 50. Notice the vocabulary it uses to outdo one another, to contribute to one another, to bless one another, to live at harmony with one another. All these things that are calling us to give 100% of ourselves to the other. Because if we don't, our relationships simply become transactions. If I do something for you, I expect something in return, 50-50. And we keep track of those things. And when conflict erupts, no longer is it us talking about an issue we need to face. It is you versus me, not us versus the issue. Only when we give 100% and control that 50% that we can, can we live into the relationships that God has called us to be in. 
We want to be in relationships. We need to be in relationships. God uses relationships to change us and shape us in so many positive ways that we could not do without them. So let us look back to the standard, this disposition, this reference as our guide for how we live in relationships and how we change together into who God calls us to be. Amen.